my dad was a man who, who um, against the odds, made it. And, um, but he would get up at usually 5, 5.30 in the morning, and he would say, if I get up, you're going to get up too. He would drag me to the gym. And, and by the way, I'm five years old, and he would drag me to the gym. My dad always said, too, that <clears throat> regardless of what you do in life and where you go, respect is going to be given when it's earned, and you have to go out and earn it every single day. This thing, you're doing it for yourself. You're not doing it for anybody else. Yes, your family supports you. Yes, your friends support you, but you're doing it for yourself at the end of the day and you're the only one who's going out there, you gotta motivate yourself and you gotta want it as much as everybody else on the track. So I've learned that, so it's easier now. So when people say, this season all you're saying is not running as fast as you should, it doesn't bother me because I've been through this already and I know what they're gonna say all the time. But I know what I'm capable of and I know what I can do, so. I think we've been hypnotized and conditioned into becoming materialists. Mm. I think, um, that we define reality with our senses. And I think that is one of the biggest delusions. So the fundamental question is, can you believe in a future that you can't see or experience with your senses yet, but you've thought about enough times in your mind mm. that your brain is literally changed to look like the event has already occurred? You no longer have to go anywhere to get it. Now it begins to come to you. You become the vortex or the magnet to your destiny. When you're grateful, you can't be worried. You can't be fearful. When you're grateful, you can't be angry. And anger and fear are what screw people up most in their relationships, in their life, in their business. So I wire myself. I was saying to you that most people want to be happy, but their habit is to be worried or pissed off or frustrated or stressed. And so they're, they've got a highway to stress and they got a dirt road to happiness. So I wire myself. I've got a highway to gratitude, which changes all your emotions. I can't handle not knowing. I can't handle not finding out. I. I I don't want to not find out. The not knowing will drive me crazy. The wondering what if. Damn it. It was right there. I, it, was, it was right there. Why, why did you do that? What was I? Going to be embarrassed of failure? Going to be ashamed of losing? I mean, those are already two things that when I just say them, if I hear somebody else say that to me, I'm reaching out going, no, dude, fail more. No, don't be ashamed, screw up, find out. Find out and lose, find out and fail rather than sit back and wonder, I'm not sure. I had to learn drive. If you don't have drive, then you never, you, you, you quit cultivating your talent. Because once you rest, and once you say it's over, I've gotten to the mountain time, then your talent starts to dwindle. That hustle, what I call hustle, is very important because at some point, you're going to be able to pull the hustle back just a little bit, and then you pick your spots. The time right now is a hustle to set things up so that in the future, you're able to cut back just a little bit and just pick your spots. You visualize where you want to be um, and what you want to accomplish, and you kind of get lost in the process of day-to-day, -day, you know, grinding it out and working, pulling on others if you have to. Um, you know, that this, it's just about not losing vision and not losing sight of what you're what you're trying to accomplish no matter what hurdles you have to go through so um i think that kind of relates to whatever you're doing uh, whatever um you know, major you've chosen or uh, what you're interested in so for me in basketball and, and it's about you know visualizing whether you write it down put it on the wall do something what, what, what your goals are um and get lost in the process of day-to-day -day grind day-to-day -day getting better every single day um Asking questions, aligning yourself with people that have been through it before, that are um, that are experienced, and, and leaning on that advice, and uh, just trying to outwork the next person, and that's the biggest thing. Fear will get the worst of the best of us, and peddlers of influence count on that. If fear is cultivated, it will become stronger. This comparison is a formula for misery. And what we do in our life is we compare ourselves to the best day and the best picture on social media that we see of somebody else. We compare ourselves at different times in our lives too. You know, even if you're in a relationship, comparing your relationship in its fifth year to its fifth week isn't fair to that relationship. There's different stages in our life. So comparison is a pathway. There's pathways to happiness and there's pathways that lead us to unhappiness. One of those for sure is comparison. And it's an ego thing oftentimes with us. We're always trying to one up things in our life. It's a matter, I think really, of being more present in the moment in your life and saying, I deserve to be happy right now. Look, you have to 
stop looking at what you don't have and what's not happening for you and start appreciating like what you do actually have like my man you got on a nice watch like your hat is fresh like there's a lot of things your family there's a lot of things to be grateful for and that's the only way you can climb out of like a place of focusing on what you don't have is by focusing on like man what do I have to be thankful for and everybody got something to be thankful for even a homeless man if he wanted to he could be like yo I'm breathing today like you know what I mean like my arms work my legs work you can start very small and that'll that it's gonna it's a process but that's how you can get about like of a negative space like that I meditate every day if I don't do it I feel like I'm constantly chasing the day as opposed to being able to be controlled and dictate the day not that you're you know calling the shots on what comes forward but the fact that I am set and ready for whatever may come my way you know I have a calmness about whatever comes my way and a poise um, and that comes from starting the morning off with meditation for me it's really just just listening to to my inner self I mean, there's that's basically it like you you sit in silence and you just allow these thoughts to come forward and you get a chance to observe um, the self I think one of my greatest inspirations or, or, or things that I would feed off of basically was just obviously people not believing in the you know the cloud of doubt that kind of I felt hung over my head and wanted to just prove everybody wrong. I wanted to make it, and I was gonna make it regardless of what anybody said. All I have to say is that this is hard work. I've worked hard for a long time, and it's not about, you know, it's not about winning, but what it's about is not giving up. If you have a dream, fight for it. There's a discipline for passion, and it's not about how many times you get rejected or but you fall down or you're beaten up. It's about how many times you stand up and are brave and you keep on going, thank you. Your body's a lot stronger than your brain sometimes. And you gotta catch your brain up. Your muscles will be ready to keep going. Your brain will have its limit. You know what I'm saying? And be like, I can't do no more. And then your body will follow suit. But when you can break the mental barriers, you'll, be, you'll notice, damn, I can do way more. I was crazy. You know what I'm saying? I had way more in me. So I think that's an example of like, feeling like you can't, like you're exhausted or you, you about to, you know, you overwhelmed and then being clear that, you know, this is how I feel to be pushing yourself more than you ever have, demanding more. You know, that's just the natural way it feel when you, when you press your line and press yourself to produce more and to be better, you know what I'm saying? Do you have any regrets? No. Don't have time to regret. We move on because we are acceptable for what we are, not what we think we should be. I'm accepted in myself by what I am, but not as I think I should be, because that's a lie. I'm a sinner, I'm an old sinner. Uh -huh. I've done some bad things, I've done some good things. So, you know, you just forgive yourself and move on. You know, it's always a little bit frustrating to me when, when people have a negative relationship with failure. Failure is a massive part of being able to be successful. You have to get comfortable with failure. You have, you have to actually seek failure. Failure is where all of the lessons are. You know, when you go to the gym and you work out, you're actually seeking failure. You want to take your muscles to the point where you get to failure because that's where the, the adaptation is. That's where growth is. Successful people fail a lot. They fail a whole lot more than they succeed, but they extract the lessons from the failure and they use that the, the energy and they use the wisdom to come around to the next phase of success. There's no cut in the corner. There's no magic bullet. There's no cheat sheet. It's really simple, as complex as it may sound. Hard work. Work hard. Believe in yourself. They tell me all the time, Chico, that's another name that I got, by the way. They say, Chico, eh, you're so lucky, Chico. I say, man, you know what's funny? Harder I work, luckier I get. <laughs> it's really that simple. Short steps, long vision. The number one thing that's going to change your life, the only thing that will change your life, change your business, change your money, change your relationship, is you must raise your standard. And I know that sounds boring, stupid, basic, but it's the truth. The only thing that changes our life long term is when we raise our standards. We are told that if we're beautiful, if we're skinny, 
if we're successful, famous, if we fit in, um, if everyone loves us, that we'll be happy. But that, that's not entirely true. But the most important journey I think all of us will go through is the journey in ourselves to find our truth, to find who we are and what makes us happy. And that's what the great ones do. They marshal and harness their resources, their mental focus, their physical energy, their personal willpower, their individual gifts, their time, and they focus them on just a few things. And if you, I want you to think about it in your life. If you stripped away all the noise, you focused on the signal, you stripped away all the complexity, you got monomaniacally concentrated on just a few things, of course you'd be brilliant at those few things. If there is something that you feel is good, something you want to do, something that means something to you, try to do it. Because I think you can only do your best work if you're doing what you want to do and if you're doing it the way you think it should be done. So don't let idiots <laughs> talk you out of something that you think is good. Life is one big psychological warfare that you play on yourself. You play on yourself, man. The most important conversation I ever had my, with, is, is with myself. And the shit I was telling myself was so tough, it was so wrong, it was so misguided. And it started to be what you say to yourself every single day. So I started flipping this into a whole different, I started being a master of what I was scared of. I was scared of my mind. And I became a, literally a master of that mind. And that's what now, from now on, it sets me apart from most people. You have to have this knowing that, okay, it may not work today, it may not work tomorrow, but this is the right thing and this is what I'm doing and this is what's feeding me. So I'll, that, that would be the best advice that I can I can give you that knowing just just believe in what you're doing and if it's and if you don't believe in it then you're not doing it you, you you haven't figured out the thing that you do best yet when you feel it and when you know no one can tell you you only have to be right once here's the truth this is the reality okay nobody's going to believe in you until you've already done it nobody's going to come and celebrate with you until you've already done it all right the work is going to come before the belief which means you're going to have to work for a long time by yourself with no applause, with no awards, with nobody telling you good job. No one's going to believe in you in the beginning, nor should they. Be okay with that. Work like hell and advertise. Do you get it? Work like hell. Go to bed and early, early to rise. Work like hell and advertise. So you work your ass off and then you let the world know about your work. That's what it is all about. Let people know if you have a company, if you have a movie, if you do a sports, work your ass off, but then advertise and let everyone know. They say an alligator is so ferocious it'll kill a lion. But I can kill, a, I can kill an alligator with my bare hands. Little old E.T., how? They say when you want to kill an alligator, you kill it right after it eats. Because right after it eats, it gets satisfied. And it goes to a state like it's almost paralyzed. Some of y'all in this room, are you paralyzed? You had a little success? You've done what nobody else in your family has done and now you chilling? Come on, you ain't hungry no more? Next hunting, I need you to stay focused, why? You should still be hungry. If the lion is the king of the jungle, how can he be the king of the jungle? If he's not the biggest, the elephant is probably one of the biggest. He can't be the fastest, because that's a cheater. He can't be the smartest. So he's not the biggest, the fastest, or the smartest. So how does a lion become the king of the jungle? His mentality. That's the only difference of a lion and an elephant. I just want to encourage people to stay away from people who tell you to stay in your lane, all right? Let me tell you something. You, 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 you've got one life to live. It's your birthright to try as many different things as you want. I get criticized for, you know, trying this, doing a bit of that. I love it. It's, it's, it's what I, I'm here for. If you want to try something different in your life, go for it, all right? If you're, a, if you're a painter and decorator and you want to be a boxer, you try that. If you're an accountant and you want to be a ballet dancer, you go for that. That's your birthright, okay? Do your thing. Don't, don't get um, pigeonholed into a box. Understand? I think of myself as, as 
the greatest person that I can be. That's it. I'm not going to go out of my, you know, out, out on a limb and say I'm the greatest this or that. I, I just, I was a kid with a dream. That's it. And and um, you know, the people before me set the bar so high, and and I was a little kid that wasn't afraid to dream as big as I could. And that's really it. I, you know, like you said, like we were talking before, I, I was dedicated. I was hardworking, and that put me in the shoes where I am now. I don't know what your future is, but if you're willing to take the harder way, the more complicated one, the one with more failures at first than successes, the one that has ultimately proven to have more meaning, more victory, more glory, then you will not regret it. Anticipate the wall. You're going to hit it. And in those moments, whatever you tell yourself, if you convince yourself that the difficulty you're facing is harder than everybody else's and you buy it, you will stay where you're at. But if you convince yourself that whatever you, wall you've hit, other people have overcome it and so can you, you go through that wall, wall as well. We're all writing a book. What's your book look like? Like your, your life is a book. You got a bunch of chapters in your book, but when they close that book, how good was the book? How good was your book? What was the ending to your book? All of the things that can be associated with you and your existence become a part of the chapters in your book. Do I work hard because I'm in this position? No, I got in this position because I work hard. 30 years putting in the work, working harder than everybody else, getting up earlier than everybody else and putting in the work. Have there been bumps in the road? Absolutely. Thank God my faith and my work ethic keep me growing and getting stronger. Everybody, I challenge you, get up earlier, work harder, you will get the results, all right? You want to go places, put in the work. It ain't going to happen on its own. The time is now to express and for people to believe in themselves. The time is now for it to be okay to be great. People in this world shun people for being great, for being a bright color, for standing out. But the time is now to be okay to be the greatest you. Happiness is a key because there's so many people that you see either in this industry or just in life in general that are going through their days and may have everything they could ever want, but they're not happy, you know? So you have to focus on what makes you happy and make decisions um, in your career, in your life that make you happy. And so I've been trying to do that and it's working, you know, and, and saying no to things that are negative and saying no to things that don't you don't want to do. You know, so um, I think that that's my biggest piece of advice. Fear is my friend. Uh -huh. I love fear. Fear, fear. fear allows me to reach my highest potential. Mm -hmm. The fear of failing is an illusion. Yeah. Fear is an illusion, but we have to have desire. We have to have something that pushes us. Fear pushes us. Uh -huh. When you don't, when that, when you don't have that feeling no more, it's over. Mm -hmm. You don't get that fear no more, it's over. Yeah. I used to worry about a lot of stuff in my life, worry about what people think, worry about making people happy, worrying about X, Y, and Z. Now I don't. I worry about being happy now, and being happy today and tomorrow, and I don't look past that, because I know that I am not guaranteed to wake up in the morning, so I'm just going to be happy for now, and that's how I live. One day at a time, if I go to bed sad tonight, I think to myself, you know what, tomorrow's going to be a brand new day, I'm going to wake up happy. And I'm going to be positive and I'm going to crack on. I'm not going to worry about anything because nothing's going to worry about me. The world might say you are not allowed to yet. I waited a long time out in the world before I gave myself permission to fail. Please don't even bother asking. Don't bother telling the world you are ready. Show it. Do it. Ever tried. Ever failed. No matter. Try again. Fail again. Fail better. Behind every moment of adversity, there's a lesson and a blessing. You just got to hang in there to see what it is. How many of y'all had some days and you ain't think you was going to make it? Now, you want to know something? Your track record for surviving bad, unbearable days, your track record is 100%. See, once you understand that, you can get on with living. A lot of y'all be tripping yourself out. Figure it out. Make something happen for yourself. Facebook wasn't the first thing I built. I also built chat systems and games, study tools and music players, and I'm not alone. 
J.K. Rowling got rejected 12 times before she finally wrote and published Harry Potter. Even Beyonce had to make hundreds of songs to get Halo. The greatest successes come from having the freedom to fail. Siddhartha uh, Gautama, the, the Buddha, he said um, that um, good people have to get out of the bed every day and try to empty the ocean with a ladle, right? It's great if somebody has an amazing education, but I know from my own experience and my own life and, and, and other people that I, I work with that you don't have to have a degree to have value or to, you know, be of tremendous worth to different businesses. That street smarts, that experience, uh, that just kind of internal, kind of creative know-how uh, is just as valuable as a degree. I fear living a life where I could have accomplished something and didn't. That's what I fear. I, I don't fear death. You don't fear the unknown. I love the unknown. I love it. You know what I want on my tombstone? On my tombstone, a quote from Horace Mann, great educator. Be ashamed to die until you have scored some victory for humanity. Life's not easy. Life is not easy. It is not. Don't try to make it that way. Life's not fair. It never was. It isn't now and it won't ever be. Do not fall into the trap, the entitlement trap, of feeling like you're a victim. You are not. Get over it and get on with it. And yes, most things are more rewarding when you break a sweat to get them. I know that I'm an example. I know 100% in the pitch and outside the pitch. So I'm always smile. I'm happy, man. I'm blessed that I play in a fantastic club. I have a fantastic family. I have four kids. I'm healthy. I have everything. So the rest doesn't interfere on me. So. I'm very, very glad. Your lack of commitment is almost an insult to the people who believe in you. And that's what I'm trying to tell myself. I said, there's people, in, there's people who believe in me. So this is what I'm telling myself right now, today. There's people that believe in me and, and me having this half commitment. It's not what the f I am. It's that's not right. what my people, it's not what the people who, who believe in me deserve. And I want to, you know, I want to, I want to give back to the people who believe in me and, and give them that belief, you know, and, and prove that belief correct. So Our nose is located right above our mouth. Suppose you don't brush your teeth for three days. Though this nose is right here, it won't tell you you have not brushed your teeth. The whole room will know you have not brushed your teeth, but you will not know. This is the human predicament. It's very easy to see what's wrong with this guy, what's wrong with her, what's wrong with her. It's very… it takes a lot of observation to see what's wrong with this. That level of keenness of observation is missing in most people. Steve Jobs said, when you grow up, you tend to get told that the world is the way that it is and that your life is to live your life inside the world and try not to get in too much trouble and maybe get an education and get a job and make some money and have a family. But life can be a lot broader than that when you realize one simple thing and that is that everything around us that we call life was made up by people that are no smarter than you. I gave the sport of boxing my whole life. I dedicated my whole life to the sport of boxing. All I ever wanted to do was put my family, my mother, my father in a comfortable position. My dad is a millionaire. My mother, she's a millionaire. The investments were, were for my grandchildren, not just my children. Yeah. You know, put them in a position. That's really what it's about. Yeah. Giving back. Like, I still outwork the brokest person Yeah. in the room. I still outwork the brokest person I know. You yeah. get what I'm saying? I can get a $10 million check the day. I'm going to be the hardest working person I know the day I, A lot of the things that I buy, like the luxury things I buy, like I be too busy working to enjoy them. You get what I'm saying? I got them on standby until, you know what I'm saying? It, until I feel the need to because I don't feel like I done done half of, of what I'm set out to do.